Hello, my name is Nathan Smith. I'm a PharmD candidate at the University of Arizona College of Pharmacy. I'm working in collaboration with Dr. Terry Warholik, Assistant Professor at the University of Arizona College of Pharmacy. This is the second part of the three presentations, which I titled Data Noir. They are intended as a review for anyone designing a research study. Part two will focus on the measures of central tendency and dispersion. The objectives for these three presentations are to define and identify nominal, ordinal, and interval ratio data, identify the appropriate measures of central tendency and dispersion, and select other appropriate statistical analyses based on the types of data collected. Remember, statistics are like a fine wine. It takes time to fully acquire a taste for it. Understanding and appreciation comes with repeated practice, which can be fun, and it's always important to analyze responsibly. This topic is important because reporting meaningful results from your study requires that you run appropriate statistical analyses on the type of data that you have. This is critical in designing your own study. And in part one, we learn how to identify the types of data. In part two, we will be looking at our first layer of statistical analysis in measures of central tendency and dispersion. As you will recall, Nominal data is categorically discrete data with no implication of order. The values or observations of nominal data can be assigned a number, but these numbers are simply labels, they're qualitative. They can be counted, but not added or subtracted. For example, race, which is a nominal measure, can be coded as 1, white, 2, black, 3, Asian, 4, Hispanic, and 5, other. If you have patient reported as one white and one reported as Asian, three Asian, you can't add them up in a meaningful way because you'll get a four Hispanic, which makes no sense. And then of course, if you try to average these, you further complicate the issue. Therefore, nominal data does have limitations in the type types of distribution statistics that you can report most appropriate measure of central tendency for nominal data is mode. The most appropriate measure of dispersion is frequency distribution. These can be represented by bar or pie charts or frequency tables. And oftentimes people report percentages of nominal data. Ordinal data is categorically discrete data that has a natural order. You can count and order this type of data. But like, with, like nominal data, you cannot add or subtract ordinal data. You do add another layer, another measure of central tendency, and that you can report a median with ordinal data that often will help illustrate what you found in your study. You can also report a mode. Measures of dispersion include frequency distribution and percentiles with ordinal data. You cannot report a mean or standard de deviation when you have ordinal data. For example, a pain scale of one, a 0 to 10, if a patient were to report a 2 in the morning, a 7 in the afternoon, and a 1 in the evening, that's not meaningful to add them up, divide by 3, and report pain as an average of 3.3 for the day. 3.3 does not correspond with any value on the scale, and therefore it is not meaningful. Interval ratio data is a lot more flexible. The intervals between the data points are equal and therefore meaningful. Interval ratio data is continuous, meaning it can take on any value, and it's quantitative. Examples include temperature, number of minutes, age, and height. With interval ratio data, you can do all the other types of analysis of central, or all the other types of measures of central tendency and dispersion, as we saw with nominal and ordinal data, including frequency distribution, median, percentiles, mode. They can also be added and subtracted, and therefore you can calculate a mean and a standard deviation. For example, if you have a number of days to cure, if you're looking at number of days to cure, days being interval ratio data, and you have a population of five, your data includes values of 4.2, 3.1, 5.0, 7.8, and 1.2 days, you can calculate a mean 
by adding those up and dividing by your population size. And your average number of days to cure of, five, of the five patients is 4.3. 4.3 days actually corresponds to something meaningful to us. So again, measures of central tendency when you're working with interval ratio data include mode, median, and mean. Measures of dispersion include frequency distribution, percentiles, and now standard deviation. Please keep in mind that you cannot change data to be more than it is. Data that is nominal or ordinal cannot be transformed to become interval ratio data. And even though you have numbers, when you're reporting nominal or ordinal data a lot of times, and you, you can get a calculator to calculate a mean and standard deviation, it does not mean that these are meaningful. The only type of data that you can calculate a mean or standard deviation for is interval ratio data. If you transform your data, make sure your measures of central tendency and dispersion are appropriate. I've created a, a table here to summarize the type, the measures of central tendency and dispersion that are appropriate to report for each type of data. So as you can see, nominal data, you can do a frequency distribution and a mode. Ordinal data, you can do both of those plus a median. Interval ratio data, you can do all of those plus the mean and the standard deviation. Here are my references for this presentation. In the next part, we'll talk about other statistical analyses that you can run based on the type of data that you have identified. Thank you.